what's up guys this is everything Apple 76 and I am going to be showing you how to make a clock app for the iPhone now I have already actually done all the coding for it as you can clearly see but I have not done this part because there is actually a lot on here that you can do and I want to show you what you can do to make it a lot better if this were to be a standalone app let's say on the App Store so the first thing you'll want to do for this part actually for to even start it is to go into storyboard and then import a label drag it to the upper right hand corner or left hand corner and then drag it all the way to the other to the opposite corner so the bottom right hand now the alignment I I like the alignment to be in to be in the center so that's my preference and then the label itself I'm going to make zero sorry zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero and then PM. That's just for me to know the size of it. So then I'm going to go to my font and let's say I want it to be 100. Okay, that's too big. So let's say 75. That's just about right. So now what I'm going to do is change the auto shrink to minimum font scale. And I'm going to set the scale to let's say 0.1 just so that way you can shrink as much as possible and I'm also going to check tighten letter spacing that that will cause it to tighten the spaces between the letters first before it actually auto shrinks so that way it can be as large as possible so now what you want to do after, after that is go into your viewcontroller.h and create a UI label called LBL timer or LBL time then after you're done creating that, go back into your storyboard, right click on view controller, and then drag LBL time into your view. That way you can set it to the label. So then after that, you'll want to create an NS date called current time and an NS timer called update timer. Once you're done with those two, go to your .m file and create this method. It is an update timer, or an up, it's, it's called update time, and this is what actually updates the timer. Um, so the first part here, I'm actually not going to talk about right now. I'm actually going to delete that for now, because I'm going to get into why we do that there in a second. So actually, you know what? Instead of deleting it, I'm going to just do that to it. So now the, the first real thing that we do here is set current time equal to NS date date. Now when you call NS date date, that just means that date is equal to the current date and time. So current time is actually equal to the current time as of when the update time is called. So NS date formatter equals time formatter or NS date formatter called time formatter equals NS date formatter alloc in it uh, so you're just creating the time formatter right there after that you want to call time formatter and set time set the time style to NS date formatter medium style and we'll be coming back to this line of coding in, uh, in just a little while next you want to set the actual label to the time formatter as string from date current time so you want to actually set it to the date you're setting this right here is setting a string from the date so it's taking the date and setting a string to it and the date is current time which is obviously the current time because of that next this is what this is how often the timer is actually called you you want to call update timer and you want it to equal to an NS timer schedule timer with time interval make the time interval 0 0.01 which is one millisecond target is self and the selector is at selector update time so this is just going to call update time every one millisecond the user info is nil and yes it repeats after you're done with that then go into your view to load and call self update time once that's all done with you go ahead and run the app
and there you go. Now you can see it's sort of skipping over some. Like it's loading it a little bit and the seconds aren't even correct because it takes so long to load. Now why is that? Well these two lines of code right here are the reason why. What happens is the update timer, the update timer in invalidate, invalidates the timer. Basically what's going on with the timer is it keeps calling it over and over and over again but it's never telling it when to release it from the memory so it is never actually being released in memory. That's what these two lines of code do. It releases it, it tells the, the timer to stop and it erases what is already in the timer. So if we go ahead and run it again it goes pretty good. It goes every second and the time is parallel to that time. Now, I said that we would be getting back to this line of code right here, and this is when we're getting back to it. So, right here it is NS date formatter medium style. Now, that defines that it is the hour, minute, second, and AM, PM. Let's say we wanted a little bit more. Let's say we wanted it to say uh, CTM for central time. Then you would go NS date formatter. And then you can see it has a long style. The long style, you can go run. Now it shows CDT. So that is central time. Central uh, CDT, central daily savings time time. But let's say you don't want it like that. Let's say you don't know what, what CDT stands for, so you want it actually spelled out. So then you go NS date formatter full style. Go ahead and run it. There we go, central daylight time. Still shows the hour, minute, second, still updates it every second. And it says the full central daylight time. Now let's say you didn't want all that let's say you wanted just the hour and the minute then you'd go NS date formatter short style go ahead and run it and it pulls up with just the hour and the minute with PM now unfortunately there is no way to get it where it's just the hour and the minute but as you as you might have noticed also on the top for the status bar, there's really no way to get it for just the hour and the minute. Also, the only way to do that would go to would be to go to military time. Now, let's say you didn't want it to be a timer. Let's say you wanted it to be a date thing. Well, all you have to do is this that this set time in, set time style here. Just change it to set date style. Delete that. Go ahead and run it. There you go, 10, 19, 12, or October 19th, 2012. Now let's say you didn't want it like that. You wanted it spelled out fully, the entire date. You'd go to full style. Friday, October 19th, 2012. Now that is basically the gist of what you can do with NS date formatter and NS and NS date. This is real, really one of the more powerful things that that you can actually do uh, in in the whole UI kit, I believe, um, because it, it it is so versatile and you can use it in so many different ways. Uh, that is basically the end of my tutorial, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to visit my website if you're on YouTube. Uh, everything dash Apple One dot blogspot dot com and I will be posting the code for this on there as well. Thank you guys and goodbye.